there's no perfect investments. And that's the reason why there's ICON. People gonna talk to you about stocks, people talk to you about funds, people talk about VUL, people talk to you about properties, people talk to you about business. We even have blockchain later on. Why? We, we need you to understand that there's no one perfect formula. That's why you have to diversify your investment. Very, very important as you learn all of these things is this. Practice due diligence in anything. In investing, in the bank, in insurance, in property. Practice due diligence. There is a law, natural law called the law of diminishing returns. So even if I add more, it will diminish because the capacity has to expand before you can expand. Ano yung importante sa'yo? Walang tama ko mali dito. Unfortunately, dahil nga sa ingay sa labas, hindi mo alam eh kung ano gusto mo talaga at importante sa'yo. Pag wala ka nito, sasama ka sa ibang tao. Kung ano importante sa kanila, join ka din. So it is very important to find out ano ang gusto mo because eventually, lahat yan ang gagaling sa beliefs. The economy was created to serve society in order to improve our human condition. So as part of the economy, as investors, you're supposed to be contributing to a better society for everyone. Leverage is a very uh, aggressive strategy. Proceed with caution. Never, never borrow money that you cannot pay. Yes. And oh, I think this is just to open your minds about, about leverage. And this is really how the wealthy businessman thinks. It is only by tracking your finances you'll be able to know how to maneuver, how to control, and you'll see ano ba yung lifestyle mo that you want to maintain from today until you age. What we are good at in the market is this. We are good at helping incubate the growth of vendors because we know everybody in the ecosystem. We know people who finance, we know people who provide HR, we know people who provide marketing, we know people who provide sanitation and hygiene. So we are the best people to grow those businesses. So, why is understanding money critical for women, OFWs, and the next generation? Why? Because what is a nation but a collection of its people? It's about our personalities. And it has a deep and it has a big impact in everything that we do, including how we handle money, including how we make decisions, and how we keep money, make money, save, and actually invest. So stocks, recurring assets, recurring income assets, and um, fast capital appreciation assets. Those are the three things that we have to hold during our lifetime and work for. Uh, the second thing is, I'm very excited about the future. I am not bullish because there are many other things we have to sort out before I become bullish, but the future looks very bright. Financial expert years, just like Marvin, just like Rex, Carl, Jason, the rest of the team, they could update you. But I strongly advise that you also take your personal journey. Read their books, try to read, try to expand your knowledge. I want whatever is said here will cause you to execute and do something. Because it's time for Filipinos, it's time for you guys to prosper. Why? Because we're the one percent. Eh. Your friends are looking at you. Eh. The more Filipinos, good Filipinos, have more than enough, you get to be a blessing to the people around you. Eh. When you have more than enough, you're now looking for people who you can bless and who you can so on. For me, the stock market is one of the best ways for you to do it. I suggest you invest now because this is one of the best times to invest. Overcoming obstacles create momentum. Today is momentum. You know why? You paid money for this seminar. It starts something. It is starting something because you're creating something that gets the ball rolling. Hey, Carl. How are you? Welcome to the show. Hello. Hello everybody. Hello Marvin. How are you? Grab it's my How's second time. It's my second time to do live after a very very long and then lang ulit ako nagdito kasi this is this is fun pero it takes time also to be able to do it pero yon. Uh welcome back Carl uh, on our live series. Thank you for doing this at 9 p.m. no. Uh are you happy guys that Carl is here with us? So Carl, how are you? All good, all good. So, dun sa mga hindi lang alam, 9 p.m. is already my sleeping time. <laughs> Siyempre, we are we we are already Australia time. Ano ba Max? Okay, so for this for this session, guys, uh, we have Carl D joining us. 
He's one of the speakers for Icon uh, 2023, which is happening in the next few days. I'll just pull up. I'll just pull this up also. So it's happening in the next few days. He's one of the speakers there, and our topic, at least for tonight, is all about passive income, uh, which can be expertise niya na real estate, or it can be other asset classes as well. So since this is an AMA, um, you can just send whatever questions you have, and then we'll do our best to be able to answer them. And ito yung challenge ko kay Randall, and ito yung papagawa ko rin sa'yo. Feel ko challenge also for you. Uh, sasagutin natin lahat ng mga tanong nila until maubo. So uh, let's let's see how it is. Pero last time, we tried to do it. Um, umabot kami halos two hours, di namin naubos yung question. Eh. So, we'll, we'll, so we'll try. I don't know if we can actually answer all of your questions, but syempre, the first ones who send questions, um, those are the ones that uh we we can possibly you know we can possibly accommodate so yon. so what what we'll do uh while you're putting in your questions carl has some questions for me then i have some questions for him then we'll go with your we'll go with your questions naman. and and by the way for those who were asking about icon since we're doing another live stream uh we already we have another promo again i have just placed it in the link check it out if it's in youtube or facebook uh for it's buy one take one brought about by our sponsors as well so carl uh, do you want to go first? Do you want me to go first? How do you want to go about this? All right. Let's set the tone, okay, Brother okay. Marvin. Okay, Tonight okay. is all about passive income. So, Marvin, when the words passive income is mentioned, mm. what comes to your mind? Oy, ganda ng baso mo. New Zealand, down under. <laughs> ganda, ganda ng question. Ha? Shout out to Jane XS pala for joining us also. So, passive income, basically, ano, uh, you have assets that are working hard for you that even if you're not doing anything anymore it's those assets that's providing cash flow for you so you by the way when i say assets hindi lang siya hindi lang siya assets na tangible or hindi lang din siya assets na digital it can also be assets brought about by your intellect so royalties from a book ganyan they're all also passive or kunyari uh may franchise ka na idea mo that you can get something the the royalties off of that pwede rin yun or kunyari artist ka they use a picture of a painting that you had or they would use a sa a composition that you had gagamitin sa movie you get royalties from that also so uh madaming ways on how you can actually get passive income pero yung keyword i guess for me is uh yun you can be like carl uh, driving everywhere that he wants to go pero because Daan-daan yung real estate properties niyan. Dami yung passive income. So, something like that. Did I answer it properly? Yeah, Mar- Marvin, I love I love that you expanded the concept of passive income to digital world, no? So, I want to emphasize on what you mentioned, Marvin, about yung royalties. Diba? Music, uh, digital art. In fact, um, yung mga online courses right now, which I've subscribed to, almost parang passive na siya. You set it in place. You have a virtual assistant making it run and then you just make money. Especially Marvin, di ba ngayon, wherein may mga programs na you just sell it worldwide. Mm. I think those make a lot of money kasi worldwide I, eh. I, I think though, it's it it can give you cash flow pero I think it's still entrepreneurial in, in nature hmm. na may level of marketing, may level of customer service pa rin siya. Na parang you, you, it, it can give you something na recurring pero Inisip ko pag nawala lahat yun, natigil yung ads mo, natigil yung ano, it won't run anymore. Eh. Unlike, for example, a song or a painting or uh, real estate, uh, if it's it's more it's more passive talaga. It's not it's not as entrepreneurial. I, I don't know kung tama yung definition ko, pero I still see it na parang papatakbo mo pa rin siya na parang business eh. Yeah, I think Marvin, uh, I just want to shout out to my good friend from Down Under, Shandy. Yeah, paro kami na oras ni Shandy. So, patulog na talaga kami pag 9 o'clock. <laughs> so, Shandy, gising ka pa kahit na it's probably what? 10, 12 o'clock there? 12 o'clock, no? Depende, uh, depende kung nasa Perth siya, same time zone lang. Eh. Same, same time huh? zone lang sa atin. Yeah, yeah. yeah probably Perth, Perth si Shandy. But Marvin, oh, I guess, um, you know, long time ago in my previous life, I used to do graphic artist work in my very previous life graphic artist but i stopped it marvin kasi na realize ko na parang hey when i do this graphic work kahit same client but tapos ko isang project i have to think again to create a second project and if, even if it's the same client i have to think again so nag-exit ako dun sa world of graphics and website development kasi na feel ko na 
hindi siya like tuloy-tuloy. You have to keep on working for it. So I think Marvin, it's this it's, session. Yeah, yeah. We we so, want to to emphasize to all our viewers yung concept na whenever you endeavor into something, let's think about is this something na continuous flow, like a river flowing. Like I have this uh my my brother-in-law who who is from AIM taught me this concept 20 years ago. Sabi niya, Carl, you know when niya... May name drop ng school pa talaga. Siyempre, para may credibility. Okay, okay, okay. Sige, go ahead. Dinrowing niya ang picture ng isang river. So sabi niya, Carl, this is the flow of money. And then, what you want to do is, somewhere along that flow, may butas at may konting na cha-channel sa iyo. And as the river flows, something goes to you continuously. So it's really a mindset, Marvin, no? Okay. Na, and what you mentioned about yung mga royalties, I think uh, yan yung ultimate dream natin na meron tayong something in the future na continuously. May, may tanong ako dito, Carl, kasi may narealize ako na baka it's, it somehow plays in a blanket na baka hindi naman talaga siya passive. Uh, when people talk about real estate, they always think about that it's passive. Pero ito question ko, is flipping houses really passive? And second also is, uh, pag nag, ano ka, yung mga bibili ka ng bahay, tas sira-sira siya, tas ayusin mo, and then you're gonna sell it also later on, yung mga makeovers. Is that still considered, would you consider that passive? Uh, very good question, Marvin. And uh, I think I will use an analogy. Same time tayo, Carl. <laughs> Perth nga. So, so, I know, Melbourne time ako, Shandy. Snacks. <laughs> so, um, just like any business, maraming variation, di ba? So, if you're like opening a restaurant, maraming type of restaurants. You can do a fast food, you can do a buffet, you can do a samgyup style, a cook on your own, shabu-shabu, hot pot version. So, sa property, ganun din, no? There are many ways to, to earn from it. One is through flipping, you buy something, you sell it. So flipping can be what well, can be the 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 oldest oldest technique in the one one of the oldest technique to make money. Oldest, super old. As in, lolo natin, lolo ng lolo natin. They did properties, and so far historically, it did well, diba? So meron kang flipping. Bilin mo ngayon, you sell it after thirty years. Uh, yung yung buying in. And ano daw yung, uh, yung what you mentioned na sira yung bahay, hindi ko that. A fixer upper. Yeah. Fixer upper, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Fixer upper involves a certain amount of labor. So kumbaga, kumbaga sa cooking, you buy arena, you sell it as arena, that's trading, di ba? You buy it and you sell it, trading. Yeah. But in fixer upper, gusto mo gawing cake yung binili mo. So you want to put... So in, it's not super passive kasi it's maybe well two things you have to actively work on it and it's a one time deal pag nabenta mo na ulit ka na naman which is uh, not one a, of my favorite it's a business na it's a business na talaga it's not really something na like rental income na talagang purely passive siya na makukuha parang gano'n yeah parang I think it's a business it can make money it can make good money yeah. if you know yeah. how yeah yeah but siguro for for this session, we like to personally kasi ako Marvin kilala mo ako. I'm really a fan of put building something now and just okay. letting it uh, continuously flow. Okay. <laughs> pero you pero sabi mo you have, you may, may sinabi ka kanina you buy something hold it for 30 years. Is that still considered flipping kung hinawakan mo ng 30 years? So parang ano na rin siya buy and hold na rin buy and hold na rin yun, naka limang palit na ng president sa Pilipinas yun kung 30 years yun. Pero di ba a flip is like a year or less than a year also? I think, Marvin, uh, hi Richard, uh, mostly we're gonna t- dwell on passive income, but you know, feel free to ask any question about property or whatever you wanna ask Marvin, love life niya, being a hands-on daddy, how to take yeah. care of a baby. <laughs> Marvin, uh, I think... Uh, if you ask me kasi, parang a, a one-year, two-year flip is a bonus. Parang, mm-hmm. parang, you know, it's like a, you know, it's a, you know, once in, in your whole lifetime, you can do it once in a while, jackpot, happy ka. But what you want to, yung talagang program is yung consistency eh. 
And alam mo naman, Marvin, marami na kasabi na consistency is the key. Di ba? Got it, got it. Yeah. Pero yun din naisip ko eh, parang, parang, parang fixer upper din siya na once na benta mo, you'll have to go on to, parang stock trading din siya na, ayun din, I, I think stock trading or crypto trading, it's something you can do at home, it's something na hindi mo kailangan mag-office, it's something pwede mo gawin sa beach, uh, na, what, na whatever lifestyle that you have. Pero may certain level of being active dun eh, kasi after you sell, you're on to the next. So parang it's it's not purely... You have assets making money for you, but it's not purely passive-passive also. Kasi pagkabenta mo, cash na siya, wala, wala na. Parang ganun. Yeah, I think tama ka, Marvin. No? Na siguro the passive income has to be further redefined. Na passive income, let's say from a property point of view, it's not totally automatic na wala kang gagawin and you make what, 6%, 8% return na wala kang gagawin. But in fairness, there's 365 days a year. You work on your condo for maybe a few weeks in a month. You get a good tenant. Like kanina, may kausap lang ako sa phone. Tenant niya, Honda, Philippines. It's been what, six years? You know, out of, out of, the, out of the six years, that's 1,800 days. Maybe once a few days, you have to do something with your condo, refresh it, something gets broken. That's, that's rentals. For rentals talaga, that's purely passive naman talaga. I mean, when I'm talking about yung sell, yung you sell it, that's where that's where it becomes... Certain I think you're right. So when you sell a property, the strategy changes. So you, mm. you're not doing the passive anymore. You're doing like a jackpot capital appreciation. You want to get, <laughs> you want to get a, a big amount of money back. So okay lang naman. It's parang, uh, wala akong maisip na analogy for it. Pero that's also another strategy. Yeah. But it, it works also. I've, I've seen so many people been, who's been successful with that. So let's answer some questions. Uh, tapos we can okay. talk talk to each other also in between or kung may questions tayo sa isa't isa. Um, Unahin ko to chronologically sa mga unang nag-post sila yung pra-prioritize natin. So, Carl, kaso para sa'yo itong unang question, cryptocurrency yung question eh. So, sakto in your in your purview of ano ex- experience. Ethereum That's my expertise. Question. Okay, my question for the AMA is, is it good to put 50% of your salary in STE for passive income? What's your view on for the long run, sir? Um, Ken, Carl will answer, then I'll answer, I'll answer after. You... Ken, that's a very good question because you're talking to the two, two spectrum. Marvin, who's <laughs> making good money with cryptocurrency, no, no, and no, no, Carl, no. Who, who, is, who has become poor because of cryptocurrency. <laughs> so two people who are in front of you both have different results. Di ba, Marvin? Okay, okay. But, but, so... so uh, would, would would so based on the question, would you still do it now, or would you you won't do it you won't do it now? Parang ganon. Okay, um, that's a very difficult question, Ken. I think if you haven't lost money yet, no, ngayon ka lang papasok, you can. You have to at least give it a try, because you haven't lost money yet. Okay, lang you know you take the risk. Malay mo, di ba? Ito na yung the bull run that the bulls have been waiting for. <laughs> okay. right? Got it. So, so, but it's definitely something uncertain. Got ba? it. Got it. Oh, how about you, Marvin? So what your is question, your... I have, I have eat. Pero I, with, with the exception of the ones for eat 2.0, um, I don't have anything staked anymore. And I've learned, I've learned my, didn't even learn my lesson, but I've, I, I want the flexibility also of, I, I want to unlock it or when I want to swap it or take it out anytime I want. Uh, I, I, I can do so. So, napansin, napansin ko rin sa mga, madami akong natry na staking. Yun. Alam nila, Carl, yan, pati sa, ano, we, we, we've tried so many uh, stake, staking mechanisms from BSC, from EAT, uh, also from uh, Solana or from Luna. So, parang, they all had their pros and cons, lalo na yung Luna. Uh, I remember yung sa Luna last year, uh, when you stake it there, when you unstake, it takes two weeks bago ibabalik sa wallet mo. So, should there be any price fluctuations, um, it became harder to be able to to take it out or to liquidate it the way you want it. So, uh, personally, um, not as much, pero I, I still I still try. Um, I'm yung sa ape coin they have ape stake. Uh, I I do that. Um, there are some also like sa Cardano, uh, may staking din sila to decentralize that to help. Um, to help decentralize the network. Ginagawa ko. Pero other than that, uh, not not as not as before. 
dat lalo si Carl dati naalala ko naghahanap siya ng mga yields pa sa mga uh, malalaking APY. Anyways, let's move on. Uh, another question is from Crocan Crow. Hi po. Yo. Ano po yung kailangan kong paghandaan if I want to buy a condo? Ayan, Carl na Carl yung question. Uh, if you want to buy a condo for rental ng tenant monthly, ano po yung mga stipulations na mahalaga sa contract? Ay, maganda rin. May, may ganyan si Carl. Ano, ano po yung added expenses na mga an, mga magkano? So, I, I think yun yung end ng ano niya. So, Carl, that's all you. Okay. Um, let me sort through the question. Ano? Alam mo, mahina kalaban natin. Ang brain power natin, mahina lang. So, I'll, I'll, I'll so... Break, I'll break, you want me to break it down for you? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, break it apart. Sir. What, what, what do you want to... What, what do people need na kailangan nilang paghandaan uh, pag nag ng condo? Tapos what do they need to put sa contract? I think na I think fair for them and also fair for the the tenant. And then number three, three-part question siguro siya. Then ano mga expenses that will be part of it pag nag sila? Okay. One at a time. Lalim na itong question na ito. Sobrang haba nito. Isang libro na ito. <laughs> Anong kailangan mo paghandaan if I want to buy a condo for rental? ng tenant monthly. Okay, anong kailangan makikita? Siguro, uh, to simplify lang, number one, yung cash position mo will be the most important for me. I I, I have a, I have an audience before who asked me, Sir Carl, we are struggling financially ngayon. What condo can I buy para umaman ako? So may, may, may konting mali dun sa purpose. If you want, if you are struggling financially and you want to make money, you go active income, magsipag ka, magtrabaho ka, magtinda ka, magtrabaho ka. Not to buy a condo and hope na makajackpot ka. So you see the mismatch no, of the purpose. Ang condo kasi and ang property, first, you have to at least be financially in excess. Kasi papatrabahuin mo na lang yung pera. Eh. So that's number one, the mindset of your cash position. Number two, if you want to buy a condo, sobrang dami nun. The, the condo has to solve a problem. There has to be a market segment. Just to use an analogy, if nakita mo maraming Japanese doon sa area kasi nag-open na Mitsubishi ng, ng manufacturing plant, then you can open a Japanese restaurant. Kasi alam mo may market. Uh, so let say, what, what you don't want to do is, let's say you have a Japanese market and then you open a Filipino restaurant. Kasi baka hindi nila type naman. So something like that. So your product has to match the tenant base. Meaning, kailangan may market segment na naghahanap ng residence. Diba? Like, if you compare it, let's say, to an to a overseas Filipino situation, if you see that, uy, ang Canada is now open to so many Filipinos coming here. Lahat sila nagpupunta sa Ontario. Do, Ontario na. Ontario will now have a strong demand for a residential property to rent out to the Filipinos coming into Canada. So, it's all about the market segment. So, yun yung sa first question. Uh, Mark, continue na ako? So, yes, yeah, go, go ahead, go ahead. So, second question is basically... Contract. contract. Yes. I know you, you parang offer something na may contract na doon, pero for those that don't have it yet or parang want to make it on their own, uh, ano yung pwede? Kasi sasagot ko dyan, punta kay chat GPT, make me a co- rental contract. <laughs> Ganun na gagawin ko ngayon. But, uh, Carl, go ahead, go ahead. You know... I want to share with you what I learned from uh, from my lawyer. A contract does not need to be malalim na English or whatever na paikot-ikot na words. It can be as simple as a Tagalog. Wag mong gagawin to. Wag mong gagawin to. Kung ginawa mo to, this is the penalty. Or ang bayad natin ay every first of the month. Kung di ka nagbayad, uh, may penalty ka. Ganun. So a contract is really just putting into paper what you've discussed so that down the road, pag nagka-problem, you have a manual. Meron kang babalikan on what to do. So, ano mga mahalaga? It's usually what you want to avoid. Diba? Kunwari, uh, the, the, the basic level are the amounts and the duration of the lease. But yung deeper level that you are in the contract is mga what if. What if hindi ka makabayad, kailan kita i-exit. Diba? What if two months ka na hindi ka makabayad, you have to voluntarily exit. Now, what if made drugs? May Pardon? experience na ganun, na talagang hindi na kabayad also? From your ah, definitely, definitely. So, I'll answer that after ito. Ah. So, okay. so, contract is all about um, 
the two of you agreeing to certain scenarios, mga what if. No? So what if hindi ka makabayad, mag-exit tayo na walang hard feelings. What if may masira na lababo, sino mag-aayos? So it's really just um, identifying all situation and parang manual lang talaga siya. If this happens, this is how we're gonna resolve it. Yon. So yeah. mahalaga, it can go as deep as you should not put drugs inside your unit. If a drugs is found, the owner is not liable and you will be fully responsible. Nandyan niya sa contract. Things like that. So, as you learn about yung concept ng contract, hindi kailangan sobrang malalim ng English, basta importante, malinaw na malinaw, then you will have a successful contract. Kasi malinaw eh. Number three, added expense and mga magkano. May, um, may, 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 may question ako, Carl. Um, may question ako. Uh, I'm, I'm asking this from personal experience also. What if yung iba, ibang part na medyo ano uh, they have one side you have one side also may may ano naman sa contract pero parang for example may nasira pero on on their side I'm there wear and tear yan but but when you see it naman parang nakita mo hindi hindi wear and tear yan kasi parang nabulok yung nabulok yung kahoy in just a few months of them using it parang ganun so uh, how would you go with something like that na parang the con- the situation can in- be interpreted by both sides uh, in a different manner also okay marvin fantastic question fantastic question and uh in my long experience with this may nagturo sa akin na mentor na this is initially it's a money issue at at the end of the day diba parang the issue is sino magbabayad eh Hindi naman sa kung sino nagsira niyan or sino talaga ang... It's really a money. Who will pay for it? Is it the landlord or is it the tenant? Diba? So, personally, as the landlord, I feel that this situation can be a God-given pagsubok. That's number one. No? Para it can be a pagsubok. Para, okay, what is your heart telling you? Sabi nga nila, diba, God always looks at our heart. Diba? So, kung, kung yung heart mo is telling you na, yeah, you know what, uh, it's not a big deal. Alam ko naman deep inside my heart, it's my responsibility. That by all means, you fund the repair. If you feel na it's a mutual responsibility, then you communicate with your tenant na, hey, why don't we just 50-50 this one? I feel that, I feel na may responsibility naman ako sa owner, pero hindi 100%, do you want to just split it? Tig 4,000 tayo. Diba? Yung ganun. And then lastly, the, the the way to to navigate this is to... So number one is check your heart, di ba? Number two is... Check your heart. Check your heart. Oh. Paano ba yan? Mahirap. Uh, number two is the golden rule. Do unto others what you want others to do unto you. Or do unto others how you want to be treated back. So imagine mo na kung ikaw yung tenant at nangyari sa'yo, how would you want your landlord to respond to you? Then that's how you treat your tenant. So, these are very challenging situations, no, na I feel if, I feel kasi pagsubok yan minsan ni God sa atin as the landlord, and if you are, yung sinasabi nyo na, if you, ano uh, uh, ba yung verse na yun, eh, parang if you, if you are a good steward, and you manage my challenge well, then I will bless you with more. Something like that. Di ba, Marv? Okay. <laughs> Ang labo ba? Ang labo, ha? Labo. I don't think about sa, sa anong ano eh. Pero anyways, yeah, okay, okay, got it. So parang ano na lang, to make it simple, uh, the way you want to be treated if you were the tenant, parang that's how you think about it if while you are the landlord naman also. Parang parang ganun, no? parang if if you will be in their shoes na you, you'll read, parang you want to be treated a certain way also and that's how you parang look yeah. at it. Yeah. So okay. that's how you na. Pero sana Marvin, it's already... 12 o'clock here in Melbourne. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's go to the third question. Um, expenses that they need to uh, they need to look at. No? And, and babawas ko na, no? people need to realize that kung 12 months yan na rin, uh, kung may agent sila, the one month goes there already, then they need to at least earmark also for certain uh, repairs na pwedeng mangyari. Kasi inisip na iba, ah, wala masira dyan, kunin ko na lahat ng rental. No? You have to set aside money for repairs also. And then ako, what I normally do is, since you own it, may property taxes yan that will also bite into uh, yung revenue. Wag, wag nyo, kung pinaparenta nyo siya, huwag nyo na kunin sa personal budget nyo and let, let the property pay for itself. Um, so, Mr. 
Carl D, uh, anything else tama ba yung mga pinagsasabi ko as as a non as a stock crypto <laughs> person <laughs> but you are a property owner so you also go through this uh, concerns so, so um um yeah you know there's a, at some point you worry about this expense but i want to share with you another perspective eh, na okay okay it's really not a big deal that you have like real property tax no or but yeah real property tax is one you pay to the government why because you're in the city you're enjoying the streets you're enjoying the stoplight you're enjoying the security that is provided to you by your local government so you pay your tax okay lang ganun talaga di ba uh, you don't want a man to be in a place na walang security walang government eh, magulo na that's why you have your real property tax number 2 you have your association juice the association juice is to maintain the building, the hallway, the elevators, the guards, the landscaping, the swimming pool. Kumaga, if you have a house, baka mas malaki pag gagasusin mo eh. So since in a condo, it's a shared facility, so natural lang na you contribute. Um, the way to max- maximize your association juice para hindi mo mabigat, is isipin mo na lang na oh, if I'm paying 4000 Pero apat kayo nakakapag-gym at nakakapag-swimming sa amenity. So, bawi na kagad yung 4,000 than going to a gym. Uh, and point. then, at the end of the day, I want you guys to focus. Masanay kasi tayo minsan sa Philippine culture na we're so expense conscious. Eh. But focus on the income. Focus on the power na, wow, I just work a few times a year and everybody does things for me. Diba? So, if you have your own house, then kailang talaga mong kailang mo magtabi ng pera to maintain your roof, your drainage, your your gutter. Marami kang i-repair. So it's it's the same lang. Ang difference lang sa bahay siguro is no, walang nagko-collect from you. So yung mga gastos in real property tax, association dues, your broker's commission, and of course the sinking fund. Yeah, it's called the sinking fund. No? What does sinking fund mean? Sinking fund in a property point of view means itatabi mo yung pera para kung may major repair. Diba? Kunwari, feeling mo, yung aircon na binili mo after 6, 7, 8 years, you're gonna change it. So you kind of set aside that sinking fund. Uh, but hindi naman siya super issue kasi what you can do is after 5 years, pag alam mong marami ka na kailangan palitan, edi yung rent na makukuha mo, huwag mo muna ilagay sa pocket mo. You just set it aside muna and say, okay, ito. Yung tenant pa rin na nagbabayad to fix all the stuff. Something like that. Hmm. Marvin, ikaw naman. Ano bang question na pwede sa'yo? So, so, so just to, just to, ano guys, ha, um, very, very important for you to realize that uh, when you earn from it, don't always assume na yung 12 months sa inyo. So, when you make computations, it has to be realistic uh, based on whatever expenses that will be there as well. May, may question ako sa si Carl, pero may, may question about Icon, but I'll, I'll ask his first question. Uh, I'll ask his question, wala sa nagtatanong, pero... Uh, would you, for example, may condo ka, tas meron kang parking, would you rent out the condo and parking to separate people? Na kunyari, isa kailangan, gusto lang niya, gusto lang niya, ano, kon, condo lang kailangan ko, hindi ko wala ng parking eh. Or would you be, ano, ay, ayoko yan, gusto ko yung isang tao na kunin niya, niya pareho. Or would you take the effort na, okay, parent ko tong condo and then I'll just find another one who'll rent the parking for me. What would be your best practice, Carl, Carl D. Rich, best practice? Yeah. Today? I just want to say hi to Salve. Ang Beshi ng bayan. Hello, Tita Beshi yeah. Salve here. Hi, Salve. Oh, si Salve, guys, Salve, this week, sana Friday, hindi pa siya nag-confirm sa akin, pero Friday, abangan nyo, nine, sana, hindi, hindi ko alam ko nag-confirm na siya, pero uh, yung, yung sinabi ko, either Friday or I think Thursday this week, live also. But she's part of Icon. Go, 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 Carl. All right, on the spot natin si Salve. Salve, mag-confirm ka na, Thursday or Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yung question mo, ah, yung about yung parking and unit. Oh. Um, I want to share lang no, sa mga tao na listening. Uh, there's really no right or wrong answer. Diba? I mean, chill lang, chill. Kung ang dumating sa sa'yo, ay unit lang ang gusto, hindi na kailangan yung parking, then fine, just rent out the unit. Okay. Diba? And then after a while, uh, kung may mag-rent ng parking, sabi mo na sa kanya na, oh, you can rent the parking, but I can only connect it to this tenant. Hanggang sa yung tenant ko ay nandyan, I can rent you the parking. But if the tenant exit at a new tenant comes in I can, na may kailangan na parking, I can no longer give you the parking. So you just have to craft an arrangement na, you know, chill lang. Ganon. Uh, 
Got it. So, but of course, if you feel that the market is so in demand with your condo, na pag hindi mo binigay dito sa condo only, you have a next one lined up, then okay din naman. So, so it's really, uh, just chill lang mga, mga kachinito. So you check, mga kachinito. So you stick, yun, 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 yun matur nyo, mga kachinito, comment below if you're learning from Mr. Chinito, real estate guy, Carl D. Uh, there's a Shout question. out to mga... I'll just answer this from Edgar Rehano. So, uh, where can you attend the seminars? Uh, we we have like a QR code here. Uh, this is what we used also for with Randall. Uh, so, you just scan that. Um, that gives you um, for for this live stream only and I think for a few hours after, naka-expire siya. Um, you get buy one, take one also. And um, if you see it's a poster dito, uh, wala si Carl dyan. It will be updated. Carl is part of Icon... Um, Carlos part of Icon 2020. We just want to let you guys know. So if whatever you're hearing from him today, uh, you'll hear that live also um, in May 27. And yun yung, si Carl talaga, I think, has so much insights when it comes to uh, real estate and property investing. So let's proceed. Um, with Marvin, the- cover yung ano sa live stream. Nakakover yung... Oh, oh, oh. oh. did I? You oh. have to remove our videos muna para makapture yung... Oh, there. There, oh, there no, you go. No, okay. There. So I'll leave it for fa- three seconds. One, two, three. And then let's continue. Okay. So we have Johnny Pressler. This is from YouTube. I'm 30 years old. Is that still young? We say the stock market is a cycle. I'm able to save up 700,000 pesos allocated in different assets. Is that okay to be aggressive for my allocation at my age? So ikaw, Carl, do you want to go first or you want me to go first? You go first, Tito Marvin. That's your expertise. Thirty, no, I'm, I'm so I'm turning forty, uh, this year. Um, I, I, I just wanna say this. No, no, thirty ako. I started already, parang diversifying into yung mas lesser aggressive na nagbibigay sa akin ng cash flow, meaning bonds, dividend stocks, and I remember that yung REITs. I, I first got into REITs twenty thirteen, so I was about 30, 30 years old at that time also. Uh, if you would ask me no mga 22, 23 ako, hindi ko pinapansin yung mga cash flow investments na yan, uh, REITs, dividends, um, bonds, because it was so boring. Pero uh, the, the the more I got older, um, I, I I realized that katulad na pinag-usapan natin kanina na, ano, na when you buy and sell kasi, I, I I don't really see it as passive. It's it's uh, it's it's assets helping you, but it's not really the assets that's helping you earn it. It's the, the skill set that you have, the experience that you have, the acumen that you have, the discipline that you have, that will help you when you're trading, when you're into capital appreciation. Um, it becomes truly passive if you put that and you start buying stocks that will give you uh, dividends. So to answer your question, at thirty depends on the target, mo eh. if um. If at se- if your target is for example yun na talaga yung target mo you want to just get 700,000 and then you just want to maintain that and you just want to get cash flow from that then okay lang to put it into uh put it into assets that will give you dividends or assets that can give you uh, cash flow on a regular basis pero uh if say for example your goal target mo you want to get 10 million so you weigh it parang 700,000 10 million medyo I'm I'm not yet even ten percent for uh with my goal that I want to hit or kunyari goal mo hundred million I'm not yet even uh I'm I'm a very very far I'm not even one percent from my goal it's a very very far away off also so that that can already answer your question kung malayo pa siya then maybe you need to become more aggressive still so yung number na yun, depende kasi sa gusto nating matamaan yung lifestyle na gusto nating makuha and then yung expenses na gusto nating ma ma, ma- replace so for me, if you feel that it's still very, very far, um, you can still be more aggressive with the way you're doing your investments. And I, I want to say this also, that um, it doesn't mean that, that tumatanda na kayo, you become, you become more risk averse. It just means that you just need to have assets that will that are a bit risk averse that will protect you. Because I realized ko also, um, crypto is more, crypto NFTs, they're more, they're riskier. The risk is than stocks. Uh, you barely see stocks that in a day they could go to zero. You barely, meron sa states yung mga backs na nag-crash. Pero 
uh, you barely see that in in the stock market. In crypto, it's a normal Tuesday when you when you see that happen. So, but even if I'm older, okay lang sa akin because I've sort of covered my bases also. Na there's a certain set of assets that if it if the crypto market doesn't do well, I I I can still carry on and parang have a normal uh, way of doing things also. So that that means also na kahit habang tumatanda ako, it allows me to still take on more risk as well. Kasi I, I sort of balanced it out already with assets na mas cash flow laden. So yun, Carl, ikaw? Did, did it make uh, sense? Or did it make sense muna yung sinabi ko? Hindi ko alam kung... Yeah, uh, made sense. A uh, lot of nosebleed. Maraming dumugong ilong doon. Marvin, nakita ko. <laughs> what, what, what would you do, Carl? 30. So, you're 46, 46 now, ba? 48? I'm turning 46, Johnny. Yeah. And I bought my first property 30 years old. So, okay. siguro yung question mo, I'll answer in maybe three parts. First, okay. I want to appreciate you, Johnny, for asking this question. Napakaganda. Because... A lot of young people have the same question as you. So I'll answer it. No? Number one, 30 years old, you're in a good position. Sabi nga nila, may nag-mentor sa akin. Sabi niya, Carl, 20 to 30, you're finding your place in the sun. Okay lang yun, palipat-lipat ka, you're finding. 30 to 40 is where you start to accelerate your profits. Talagang, yun yung magsisipag ka. So yes, to be aggressive at your age is yes. But let me define what is aggressive. Aggressive for me at 30 years old is not randomly putting your money in mga high returns na, na mga product na baka mas scam tayo. Aggressive for me at 30 years old is, is you know, just really stretching yourself kung ano man yung skill set mo, taking, opening up your YouTube channel, doing videos, uh, doing your TikTok, um, investing with partners, a business, so you get the learning. That's aggressive. For me at 30 years old so yes definitely be aggressive uh with your time with your skill set um di different asset uh different strokes for different folks diba? he says she says kami no, ni marvin for me medyo purist ako eh. uh, i don't know how to invest in other things except for property and then, doon na ako nag-stick. Kasi yun lang yung alam ko. And uh, doon lang tayo sineswerte. So, di na ako nakikinig kay Marvin. Lahat ng advice sa akin, hindi nag-work for me. <laughs> Siya lang yung nag <laughs> So, in different strokes for different folks. So, if you you can do the diversification route, but you can also do the purest route pag nahanap mo yung groove mo. Yun, Marvin. Kaya pala di Johnny, mo appreciate that. Yep. Kaya pala di mo ako sinuput sa lunch natin. Ha? Kala ko magsasalmon doon tayo. Pag-usapan natin yung auto 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 trading using market. <laughs> no, no, no. It's still in my task list. Okay. Matut matutuloy tayo yan. Joke lang yun. Joke lang yun. Um, no, but... I, I, I want to I wanna say this also before we proceed to the next one. No? Uh, parang, is it okay to be aggressive for my allocation at my age? Uh, I, I think oh, 30 still young eh. 30 still, yes. 30 still, 30 still very, very yang and tama sabi ni Carl kadina na ano eh um yung income capacity mo ng 30 will be different from income capacity mo ng 22 kasi income capacity mo ng 38 will be different from 30 also so you'll probably have more and you can use that to become more aggressive with your investments so yun let's proceed to the next um super happy daw siya si Reynaldo Gweb condo renting is it now ay a good condo in Vertis North so may, may I'll rephrase the question na lang kasi nag we talked about rentals naman din. So maybe, is Vertis North good? And is it a good idea to enter now with the purpose of having it rented out? Okay. Ronaldo, um, it's just like asking, Sir Carl, is it still a good, uh, still good to open a Japanese restaurant at this point? Diba? And diamond ibang Japanese restaurant. So I will say is, you have to be unique. There has to be a unique offer. There's a Japanese restaurant. So just like yung condo that you're eyeing, uh, there has to be a unique offer. Number two, there has to be a market that you are serving. Just like a Japanese restaurant, who will be your clients, diba? Uh -oh. So I'm not familiar how to answer this at this point, but this is how you process it. 
you look into the property you're buying, then you analyze who will be the market that I'm serving. What is yeah. their capacity to, to earn? No? So a, a very good uh, example, an extreme, extreme learning will be, for example, Apple. Apple, I think, no, Marvin, moved their headquarters from certain place to their circular building somewhere else. Would, would you know, Marco, sa anong lugar? No. Yes, yeah, sa so, so California. The Palo Alto. Oh, nag, Nag-move sila, eh, di ba, from Silicon Valley to somewhere a bit farther. Oh, and they... Pero yung parang bilog, yung parang campus nila na, na circular. Tama, is that what you're yeah, talking about? Yeah, yeah yung circular one. Yes, yes. So that move... Um, nag-drive talaga ng growth kung saan nag-move si Apple. Kasi talaga ang daming tao na employees, lahat nag-move eh. And then ang daming nag-rent, ang daming bumili ng property. And syempre, mga Apple employees, they have high salary. Diba? So nag-move sila. Ganon din with Tesla. If Tesla open a gigafactory in Texas, if Amazon open suddenly a new facility in a certain place, then definitely there will be a sudden out, uh, inflow of uh, people and traffic. So, that is what you need to find, Mr. Ronaldo. Where Car- in the Philippines Car- is mega Car- movement? Curious lang ako. So, so at, at its current point right now, pero kung vert is north, who, is, is, who should they be targeting if parang nakalock in na siya doon? Meron na dapat ba siya dapat target in mind na audience for it or at least our renters? Is that is that a way to ask? Is that a good question to ask? Yeah, yeah. I don't know the answer, but the way to process it, nga, yeah, you should know who will be your target renter. Oh, and then uh, what is their price point? Maraming variations yan, mga kapatid. Number one, um, for example, um, kwento lang ito, a case study is kunari in Makati. Makati is known to be an expensive place, mahal yung mga condos, ganun ganon, 40,000, 50,000 a month. Okay yun. But paano yung mga 10,000 a month lang ang housing budget niya. O, di, paano yung worker na yun? So now, that is an, a market na may, may demand. So, that's why, share ko lang sa'yo, there was this property in Makati that we we bought a few years back. It was a one-bedroom na lubang building, 17,000 a month. Very near PBCOM, like one block behind lang. So, and there's a lot of expats there. So, 17,000 a month, pero lubang building. So when uh, vacant siya, nahirapan kami mag-compete kasi luma na yung building. People would now go to the newer SM buildings for 17,000 a month. So what we did was we... we Alam ko yan, em- hula ko, hula ko, hula ko. Yan yung capsule ko, yan yung capsule. Yan yung capsule. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, galing ko, nalala yeah. ko, nalala ko. Okay, go, go. Kwento ko lang din, dahil nandito na rin tayo. It's parang libreng kwento sa mga nandito sa live. So we emptied the unit and then we changed it to like sleep pods. It was inspired by yung mga sleeping pods sa uh, airplane. Sa so, airplane, sa Japan, ganun. Parang sleep capsule type. So by doing that, we were able to accommodate four people in that unit. So now we charge 8,000 per person times four, 32,000. Actually, 35 ba nga yung rental namin eh. So nakita nyo how you analyze the market needs and gave them a product na kulang ang supply in the market. That's how you should think. So, but ito na, ito, kwento lang, kwento lang. I'm sure nasa mind yan. What happened during the pande- pandemic? I was vacant during the pandemic. I mean, natural lang yun. Kasi na, wala akong social distancing. Masyadong tight yung unit. Four in a room. Walang distancing. Tapos, uh, walang masyadong office workers during that time. Everybody went home to their provinces. So, I was vacant during the pandemic. But by God's <laughs> grace, uh, I'm now back and the unit is now tenanted again. Galing, galing, galing. In, in times like that, not not part of their question though, pero in times like that, do you still get sad pa rin na, ay, sayang, wala nag-re-ret yun? Or parang, it's not an emotional process for you anymore. It's more of a numerical, ano, ay, okay lang yan, madami pa naman ako ibang property, or okay lang yan, magre-recover lang din yan later on. And, and then, like like what we're seeing now, uh, do you still get emotional from properties? Love your question, Marvin. So, I think, um, I, I, I think at some point, you remove the emotional part because there's nothing you can do naman by worrying. And I mean, you worry, you cry, you talk to your wife about it. Wala naman, nothing changed by doing that. Diba? So, nasanay na tayo na whenever there's a yeah, young, young unit, vacant siya for three years, you start thinking, okay, ano pwede kong gawin? Ano pwede kong gawin? Ano pwede kong gawin? How can I promote, promote, promote? 
And eventually, dahil di ka nag-stop mag-promote, mayroon na naman tayong tenant after three years of being vacant. So nung pandemic, technically we just stopped. We just stopped kasi it doesn't work talaga. Wala kami social distancing. And you also stop worrying about it. And then ngayon na balik na, reactivate na naman. Marvin, I want to share lang na uh, during the icon, I'll be okay. sharing the four, four P's of how to rent out your condo fast. So I'll be speaking to people who are vacant, yung mga condo nila ngayon. Four P's. So, hindi ko siya share dito kung ano yung four P's na yun. You have to see it live in icon. Okay, so guys, here's the QR code for it for those who want to uh, join us as well. May pabitin pa si Carla <laughs> sa, sa, ano, sa uh, four P's. Yun. But that's what you can expect. So here's the QR code for the buy one, take one promo for icon. Now let's continue. Uh, keep on sending oh, your questions. Yeah, Mark, yeah. ako naman magtatanong siya. This is from okay. Candy. Candy, how are you? Kumusta na si Marky? Wait lang, uh, flash uh, Okay, oh. uh, you're talking about the question ni Ken, Candy Red? Candy Red ba ito? Yeah. Okay, para I can <laughs> flash it. Okay, okay, so I can flash it. Okay, go. Yeah. Okay. Sige, hanapin mo lang. Hindi, naka-fla- naka-flash na. From what I'm hearing, uh, pag-ibig seems to give a good return. No? Oh, I don't have it, but I've been hearing people... Uh, happy about it. What are your thoughts, Marvin, on pag-ibig as a passive income? Uh, it, it's it's literal passive income kasi you just put in your capital and then you get dividends on a yearly basis. Uh, what makes it good kasi is guaranteed you capital mo eh. So, you can put chaka chaka chaka. That's why I, if we, for those who have been following me maybe for four years, Lang. That's when I just started talking about pag-ibig. Kasi kala ko before, may limit siya eh. Ngayon, you can put as much as you want. It doesn't matter what amount you put. Guaranteed yung capital mo. And that's that's amazing. Kasi parang, sa, you can't get that sa banks. You can't get that sa stocks. You can't get that sa bonds. You can't get that anywhere else eh. Where can you find an asset class where you could put millions or you could put whatever amount that you want? Tapos guaranteed ng government. Ay, sorry. Government bonds are guaranteed. Um, yung, when I said bonds kanina, corporate bonds yun. Pero for pag-ibig and then for government bonds, those are the asset classes na pag naglagay ka, you hold it to maturity, uh, guaranteed yung capital mo. So, I, I think that's one of the fascinating items about it. Tapos, uh, hindi lang siya guaranteed, pero yung returns nun uh, beats bonds. It beats some rental properties, especially the ones that bought it later on. Yung mga nakabili ng mas maaga, syempre mas malaki yung yield nila. It beats some dividend stocks. Uh, tapos guaranteed siya. That's why it's alluring. Tapos, um, yung pinaka-interesting doon, it's tax-free. So you have all of that element together into an asset that will give you something that's tax-free, guaranteed capital, tapos a higher rate of return compared to other asset classes. Kaya siya patok sa ibang, kaya siya patok sa ibang tao. I, I think it's designed for people who are more uh, conservative in the way they would deal with their investments. So, y- gusto mo sagutin ko tong tanong, ay hindi, sagutin mo muna to. Uh, yung nasa, naka-flash ngayon. Pero how would you see that versus yung tinanong niya na pag-ibig versus real estate appreciation versus real estate return? I I, I made the point na already that um, I think these are for people who just want their capital to be intact. Kasi lamang na lamang yung real estate sa capital appreciation. Eh. Doon pa lang, eh. leave something for seven years, uh, the capital appreciation alone plus the dividends will already beat the fixed the fix term that you will get from uh, from pag-ibig. Eh. Pero Carl, how, how, would you, how would you say it? Or would you would you pick MP2 versus real estate? Um, okay. Mar- Marvin, tapos mo muna. MP2 okay. versus Philippine stock versus global fund. Ah, okay, okay. <laughs> Binali ko sa... Okay. Uh, so, the second is, um, I, I would, I would pick, so, kung papapili mo ako dun sa tatlo, ano ba to? Pag-ibig, Philippine stock dividend, global fund stock dividend, real estate, and then rental units. So, and people need to realize this na mas mataas yung dividends ng stock sa Philippines kesa yung stock sa US. Um, if you notice yung mga stocks na binabanggit, kahit yung Kilawarin Buffett, yung Coca-Cola at current rates, it's lower than the dividends that we would get here. Even the rates that we would get here, um, the dividends here are higher. So, yung approach ko, kung purely dividends yung habol ko, uh, Philippines yung mas gusto ko. Pag gusto ko, you, you buy US because 
you know Coca-Cola will be there. Eh. You know also that because people will buy Coca-Cola, their sales will just increase and then your population lumalaki. And Coca-Cola has brand recognition. Eh. You buy it for that. Eh. Pero since they're earning, bonus yung dividends. Pero hindi primary motivation mo is to get dividends done. So if you're asking me apples to apples dividends, I'll pick Philippine stocks over US stocks. Now, uh, real estate rentals, yung, yung, may, may pros and cons yung ano, may pros and cons yung rentals versus dividend investing. Eh. Pag unit mo, you can dictate the price you want to rent it out. Eh. And then also, like Carl will always say, pwede mo pagandahin yung unit para you can command a better price para you're also more competitive. Eh. Sa dividends, hindi mo control eh. Whatever the company will dictate, uh, that's what you get. So kung sinabi nila, well, you're giving, they're giving one peso per share, uh, no matter how good the performance of the company is, no matter how much they make, you get one peso per share. Unlike sa real estate, you want to earn more, you have the flexibility kasi you own the property. Eh. You, however naman, yung, what I like about stocks is, <clears throat> I'm not sure if you notice this, pag nakakuha kayo ng dividends, Kaltas na yung taxes eh. May with, with, withholding tax na. So you don't have to worry about the tax part anymore, the filing part anymore. Eh. Then second is, wala nang post date and check. Hindi ka na matatalbugan. Diretso na yan. Credit na yan sa account mo. You can use it or you can use it already. So uh, no 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 more hassle of uh, uh, you have to deposit every month. It goes there on a regular basis. Then uh, I, I think one thing that I like about it also is um, as long as the company is there, you can expect that the dividends will be coming and then you don't have to think about do magre-renew ba to o hindi do I have to find another one uh, uh, for for me as well so I, I think those are the merits of that and then last na lang for between stocks and real estate and and renting is the liquidity uh, liquidity for me can go both ways meaning kung gusto mong ibenta kunyari nangyari ng COVID kung gusto mong ibenta you can sell your stock dividend uh, dividend paying stock anytime you want uh you can also get it in a discount pag bumagsak siya versus yung condo if you want to sell it you, you you'll have to wait to get a buyer or you have to sell it at a price lower pero i said liquidity na na it's neutral because yung kaganda ng real estate na liquid siya is pag bumabagsak yung market since real estate yan hindi ka maging emotional you know you, i haven't seen a real estate investor na nagpa-panic dahil bumabagsak yung prices. It doesn't happen that way. Sa stock market, because it's liquid, it's easy for people also to panic sell. And then, which will be detrimental also for them. So, I, I think it's it's neutral in a way, yung pagka-liquid niya. Then, I I think appreciation, hindi siya, hindi siya head-to-head kasi pag-appreciation, you're not in it for cash flow. Eh. You're in it for parang buying a, pro- a piece of land and then holding it for for the long term. So, yun. Did I answer it properly, Carl? Or do you... Or tama love naman it, yung... Love it. Naman, di ko naman love it. Love it. <laughs> no. no, no, no. Perfect, perfect, Marvin. Uh, love your answer. It really shows yung characteristic ng bawat isang product. No? Candy, I'll just like uh, add on to what Marvin said. I think at the end of the day, there's no right or wrong answer. Eh. You don't choose kung sa mo lalagay. It's like a platong Pilipino. Diba? Yung platong Pilipino, may gulay, may karne, may carbohydrates. Diba? It's really just that. Ang tanong na la- So now that Marvin mentioned ano yung mga feature ng isang product, you now choose ano yung mo sa plato mo. I think, I think lang, ha, wala ko nito, but I think pag-ibig MP2 seems like a fantastic product. No? Uh, but like kami as a family, we have liquidity. for Definitely you need liquidity. Hindi pwedeng all property. And then you, have the proper... you don't have liquidity. You have sobrang daming liquidity, guys. Yun yung, yan sa... <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> Plato Pilipino, you have your you have your liquidity, you have your property. Uh, but hindi kami super diversified. Uh, we're heavy on property, but there's the liquidity. But uh, I want to end it here, no, Marv, just to, just to challenge the mindset. No? Kagabi, I was uh, mindlessly scrolling through my Facebook uh, shorts. Hindi may nakita ko isang interview, sabi niya, I was a millionaire. Nabaliktad mo, Facebook Reels and YouTube Shorts. Ayun, whatever. <laughs> Basta I was, mind- <laughs> I was mindlessly scrolling. And then, uh, may nag-appear sa isang guy, sabi niya, I retired 
I was a millionaire at 47. But now I'm homeless. So na ina intrigue ako, pinanood ko. Paano isang millionaire at 47, early retired, became homeless? Kasi yung pera niya, nilagay niya sa isang high-yielding product at nagsarado or hindi na niya na-access yung pera niya. So, naubusan siya ng money. Tapos, siguro, during... So, so I guess, it's just a realization din na why you need to really spread it out a bit para kung may isang institution na mag-close, hindi ka ganun ka-affected. Yon. Got it, got it. Carl, before I continue with the set of questions, we're we're running one hour already, but we have 200 people live in YouTube and Facebook joining us. Um, do you want to continue pa? How, 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 may, how long can I keep you here? But I respect, I have to respect your time also. So, uh, Pare, uh, the questions are really awesome. And uh, yeah, let, let's let's keep yeah, on let's, going. Until, 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 until may audience, until dito lang tayo. Hindi mo ubo yan, sumuko si Randall kahapon. But sige, sige. Okay, let's continue. Okay. Um, Derek Balboa from YouTube. Hi, Sir Carl. Aside from MP2 and REITs, any exposure that has low minimum capital po sa real estate? Or siguro, question niya, meron bang pwedeng pasukan na real estate na parang, I guess, the the lowest that they can enter into? Is that a good, is that a good way to uh, phrase it? But, kasi I know naman you need, you need a certain amount of money. Or parang, are you... You, would you recommend people na mag-leverage ka na lang if you want to enter something with a lower amount of capital? Is that, is that the approach to take also? Okay, Derek, uh, fantastic question. Ha? Talaga so, na tina-challenge. Oh, tina-challenge nyo yung uh, tina-challenge nyo kami ni Marvin sa mga mahirap na question. Um, Oy, ba't ka na wala, Marvin? Go, go, go. Um... Okay, this will help you sort out. No? I think real estate at some point, yes and no ang sagot. Ah. Meron. Meron ang sasabihin na product na mura. Yes and no. Real estate kasi at some point, you know, it's really a product na medyo expensive. The downside, I'm gonna share with you this one. The downside of a cheap real estate, what you don't want is it remains cheap. Meaning, yung target buyer mo in the future will be the parang, you know, um, lower income bracket. Usually kasi ang property na tumataas in value is pag tinarget mo yung high income bracket, yun yung talaga nag-shoot up yung prices. So, again, to repeat, pag masyadong mura yung real estate and it's targeting a low income market, next time ibibenta mo, share in yung market mo, yung low income. So it won't go up as high. What you want to do, ito na yung positive of that question. What you want to do is, kung konting lang pera mo, buy an area na feeling mo, uy, mag-grow to. Itong probinsya namin, uh, mag-grow to. Like, kunyari, I would just say, kunyari, bataan. Bataan, di ba? There's a bridge coming, there's a gigantic uh, Roman superhighway being done, so many things happening there. SM is opening, Villar is opening, Vista Mall, Bataan. So you can buy a Bataan property and say, maybe in 20 years, they develop to fully and this property will be part of, let's say, a commercial development na kasi it's along the road. Sa ngayon, probinsya siya, but the road will be widened and I will be right smack in a, in a commercial area. But I will give myself 20 years. So, medyo ganun. Pag yung uh, low capital strategy. But it's it's a very difficult strategy kasi you need time. You need really time and it, you, you need development to happen. You need SM to come in, Robinsons, uh, or an airport to come in. Nangyayari yan in areas, I'm gonna share with you, historically, saan nangyayari ito? Uh, Take, for example... Inabangan na tayo mga Carl D. Historical answers. Oh, historical lang. I cannot predict the future. Historically, Fairview. Diba? Fairview, I remember when I was in high school, malayo yun. Diba? People don't want to go there. Madilim. Sabi nga nila, if you kill somebody, you throw it away in Fairview. Diba? Ganun, diba? Marvin, pasensya ka na. Fairview, hindi mo kabisado yan kasi BGC boy ka. Hindi mo... Tsaka nung bata, na, bata ako, south talaga, so tawag namin Fairview eh. So... <laughs> And I, I think sa South, Marvin, may ganun din eh. Yung dating parang malayo. Yeah, yeah. Ano, fairview is... 
may, yeah, may mga friends ako na taga Quezon City na yun, pag, pag nakakita na sila ng toll gate sa South, parang sobrang <laughs> probinsya na sa kanila, parang ganun. So, I, I think it goes both ways also. Both ways. So, yeah, um, areas like uh, the Vertis North area, dati puro squatter yan, di ba? So, when when the squatter was removed, uh, and the mall was up, suddenly yung fringes niya became valuable. Ganun din sa SM North. Nung walang SM North, that area is like a probinsya. Now, that area behind SM North is very valuable for housing, dormitory. Why? Kasi maraming workers na around the SM Mall. Eh. So things like that. Kunwari, Mega Mall. Saan pupunta yung mga workers ng Mega Mall when they go home? I'm sure meron yan. Kasi Pasig is expensive. So medyo they go to the fringes, di ba? Outside the expensive Pasig. So things like Valenzuela used to be provincial, but now it's also very expensive. And what I heard is the the mayor or congressman is now changing Valenzuela from an industrial factory zone to a higher end. So tumataas ang tumataas yung value ng land. Next would be Bulacan. Bulacan used to be a province, but now, uh, habang daming developments ang ngayari doon, commercial, industrial, even Ayala Land is there na ngayon doing some developments. So yung dating probinsya na mura, tumaas sa in value. Tapos nagkaroon pa ng uh, MRT that will go to San Jose del Monte and then you will have that some access now to NLEX. So these things will drive cheap property up but you need time. You need that 10, 15, 20 years. Yun lang, Mar, good question for Derek. So this question is for me pero ikaw naman yung basa Carl kasi stock market question. Where is it? Alright, alright, alright. Do you see it? Okay. Mr. Marvin Guillermo, will investing in telephone, uh, PLDT, at their present level of 1,200 be a good source of passive income? Okay. Considering so, your dividend is at 9 to 10. Uh, so, ako, I, I, I like it. Um, yun, yun yung naging strategy ko over the past few years that if the dividend yield is above a certain threshold that I like. Um, kahit buwag, kasi literally at 1 to, malaki na bidagsak ng tel from 1, 8 to 1, 9 just a few months ago. Eh. Plus, considering um, madami rin nangyari sa kanila na pinag-usapan ng tao over the past few months that are not as bullish kaya mo ba yung price. Pero if you look at it also, uh, tama naman na uh, from the dividend divided by the, the price that you'll get, the dividend yield will be higher. So for me, I'm okay with it. I actually like, I actually like it. And then if you look at it versus other dividend-paying companies, it's one of the higher ones right now given that the stock price is lower. Uh, so, yung risk lang dyan is if whatever we're seeing right now becomes a threat to their income, na pag bumaba yung income nila in the next few years, yung dividend nila mas mababa. So, I'm, I'm okay to take that risk right now uh, given that if I'll be rewarded a higher amount of dividends, I'm okay with it. And then, if it goes down to a level na hindi na siya okay sa akin, yun yung gusto ko sa stock market. I can, I'll just sell and then I'll transfer it to another uh, dividend-paying stock that will be attractive for me. Pero ito yung, I'll, I'll use Carl D's reference for this eh. Um, and he, I, I, hindi ko alam kung naalala niya to, pero lagi niya sinasabi to eh. Na you make money when you buy. Meaning, sa condominium or sa property, when you buy a piece of property or you buy a uh, condo that's very, very cheap, yung rental yield mo, tata, tataas, ma, mas mataas, mas, mas mataas siya compared to when you buy it when the market is parang more excited, more bullish kasi mas, mas bibili mo siya at premium. So, the more, the, the more you get into something na hindi siya, hindi excited yung mga tao about it from a dividend perspective, uh, your yields will be higher. Pero yun din, don't be super optimistic also na talagang your your madami sa crypto nito tao nila hope yung na you're just hoping that it will get better if things get bad in the next few years that hindi na acceptable sa yung dividends na makukuha mo and then you don't think that they can recover from it uh you have to sell pero yung interesting doon habang nung okay siya binabayaran kanya na mataas na if you're getting like dividends na 4% versus 9 10 you're getting more than double so 
mababawi mo siya doon and then you can earmark it already na kung mag, kung kung mabenta ko siya later on kasi mas mababa yung dividends getting it at 9 10% na, right now would be higher for me then yun so i hope it made sense uh let's continue uh sabi carlo sabi ni brian you're one of the best mentors daw so ibang klase talaga to si carl d uh ngayon lang lumabas si kay sabi Aha, uh-huh. ayan, may question. Okay. Sir Carl and Sir Marvin, good evening. Uh, question lang, kaya po bang pagsabayin ng pagiging stockbroker and real estate broker as a career? And more more for you, Carl, no? kasi I've never been I've never been a stockbroker. I used online platforms all my life, so I don't have any exposure on that. But uh, maybe siguro a good question would be, can you be a real estate broker and then have another have another, I guess, job or career at the same time? Is that a good question? Yeah, I, I think Julius, uh, if you're super masipag enough to really be an expert in both fields, then I think yeah, it's definitely doable, and it it it's fantastic if you can be that person na uh, combined, no? I say you you from a business point of view, you can serve a bigger market, no? But of course, the challenge there, naman, is simply you you want to make sure na is you don't come across as parang not so focused, diba? So it, it, it can be done and it would be fantastic if you can do it. But of course, it takes a lot of hard work talagang, to be able to be the, both both worlds. Yon. Got it. Marv, I have, yeah, I have a next question for you. What about my next? Si, sabi ni Shandy, by the way, Percha, tama, tama yung hinala ko na Percha. Anyways, eto si Salve, question niya para sa iyo to Carl na Carl to. Uh, ilang Oy. percent dapat ang real estate sa portfolio na hindi real estate expert and depending on it for passive income. Okay. Patay ka dapat maganda answer mo Salve nagtanong. Salve says, I'm so pressured, mabeshi, beshi ng bayan. I would look at it not from a percentage point of view but siguro step by step. Meaning you buy one property, and if it's for rental, you rent it out. If it's successful, happy ka, you, you realize the, the potential, you buy another one. Ganun lang. And then, and then, then uh, if you're successful, you buy another one. If on the third one, medyo nag-fail, you slow down. And, and take it, ganun lang. So that's how I would do it. Parang really just one step at a time. You will go fast if you're confident. Kasi kunari, um, uh, when there was Pogo a few years ago, the opportunity was serving the Pogo market, either selling to them or leasing to them or servicing them. So, so ngayon wala so, ng Pogo, so nag-iba yung market. No? So you have to just service what the market is, is nandyan. So in short, uh, it's not based on percentages. Parang it's more of your feel on where the market is going. Parang you don't force yourself na kailangan 40% ng net worth ko nasa real estate. Pero yung 40% na yun, you're not too confident with the properties that you're buying already. No? Parang that's what you're saying. No? Na parang you take it you take it a step at a time based on your competence, experience, and then skill also. Yeah, yeah. That's how I would see it. Parang not on a, from a percentage. Eh, alam mo, Mark, kwento ko lang ha. I also had this question before. Sir Carl, how much of my income in percentage should be allocated to to property, diba? Or to investments? And uh, I, I I understand where that question is coming from, no? But I'm going to share a different point of view. The way I see it kasi is you can also analyze it from a peso amount point of view. What I will do is I will set my basic, basic uh, survival amount, diba? Kunyari, you need basically 20,000 to survive. So kung sweldo mo, 25,000, then it's clear, 5,000 ang investable fund mo. It's not a percentage. Mm. But if your salary is 200,000 and then you, you're living expense only 20,000, 20, then you have 180,000 of investable fund. So hindi rin siya percentage, di ba? So yun lang gusto ko i-share dito sa audience na another way to to approach. Got it, got it. Um, ito, tatawid tayo ulit, Carl. I'll answer this longer, pero maybe you wanna chime in. Is it worth buying one BTC for the next 10 years? Parang, is one BTC enough? Would, what would, or would you not venture into Bitcoin anymore, Carl? 
Uh, how much is one BTC now? Now, mga 27,000. 27,000. Uh, that's how much in pesos? Pesos is 5, uh, 1 million? One, less than 1.5. Less than 1.5. Okay. Here's my answer, Panda Will. I, I'll do a short answer. If you're in excess right now, and it's a big excess, or kahit na, or itong 1.5 million mo ay talagang excess, I would buy one BTC and take my risk. If it doesn't work, it's okay. But if it works, at least you are able to participate. That's how I would see it. Marvin, how about you? <laughs> you, you, already, you already answered it properly. Eh. You, parang ganun lang din sa question is Alvi about allocation. You buy as much BTC as what your conviction entails you to do and then what amount of money also you have in your other asset classes. Kasi kung kunyari, lahat ng pera mo nasa BTC tapos yun na yung pinaka-1 BTC mo and then it it drops, can you take it that your whole portfolio would drop by a significant number? So, I, so yung sinabi ni Carl mismo sa real estate, yun yung gusto ko sabihin sa'yo sa BTC also. Now, you take it one by one, you, and then, oh, oh, parang okay to, ha? parang one BTC na, tas nag-drop siya, pero okay naman ako, hindi naman affect, hindi nakatulog naman ako may impact, okay din yung iba kong assets, I'm still earning pa naman. So, yung next question doon is, Am I okay? If you're okay, next question you could do is, do I maintain it at this level or do I add some more? Or if I have more money, do I put it into something else? Parang ganon. Anyways, uh, Candy Red, Sir D, ayan, ayan, Carl D, Sir Carl D, your take on residential versus commercial, glamping rentals, rental units, sir. Thank you, Sir Carl. Marvin, sagutin natin to kasi I think maraming tao rin ang uh, nag-iisip itong question na to, no? Um, this is how I would process it. This is how you process it. Because of no, no, because of COVID, barang it's becoming a thing for the past two years, parang ganun. Um, yeah, yeah. Sa okay. Shansi and Shansi glamping. Okay, sorry, go ahead, go ahead. Na, na, na ko lang. Okay. So this is how you can process it. All of them have opportunities. Ah, yeah, number one, but all of them have opportunities. Kasi property is all, is still at some point a business. You are solving a problem. Residential, you are solving the problem of that person who needs a house, who needs a place to stay. So if ang pinasend sa'yo ni God ay isang property na very clear na, uy, parang may demand for residential, then by all means, go for it. <coughs> Commercial, if a property is presented to you, uy, parang madami ang population dito. Ah. There's a thick demographics of young people. So, and it looks like walang, walang milk tea in the area. <laughs> I will buy the commercial. Diba? Kasi very thick yung population eh. But, the price has to be reasonable. You don't want to pay super high price naman for a commercial kasi a milk tea store can only make so much in a day. I mean, kunwari lang, it makes 4,000 a day. Diba? 4,000 in sales. What is the profit there? I don't know. Uh, Sige na, 2,000 ang profit. So out of 2,000, magbabawas siya ng salaries. Maybe they can afford 1,000 pesos a day na rent or 30,000 a month. So that's how you analyze din yung costing mo. Kung may it's reasonable na may mararent out mo yan in a certain price. Diba? Uh, glamping, um, I don't go into that because wala naman akong land that I feel is bagay for glamping. So if you are presented with a land that you feel may opportunity and you like, you see the demand, you see the market segment, they, I feel that madami at madaming tao ang gusto mag-glamping. Diba? Then you go for it. But you have to also manage it backwards na, okay, so how many glampers do you need in a week to cover for your costing? In a month, consider up, 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 up season and low season, rainy season, and after five years, ten years, do you think that it will still be in demand? So I feel that maybe it can be seasonal. It's a lot of work, and what if may mangyari dun sa glamp site mo, di ba? Uh, somebody will be blamed. Are you ready to to take that role? of dealing with kung may nangyari sa glam. So, may mga gan, uh, not, not to discourage, but these are the things you think about before you venture. So, mga ganon. So, 
the, the residential is the safest. It, it's, it's just there. So, minsan isipin mo kasi na, are we buying rental properties because we want the passiveness, yung simple lang, passive, 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 or we want to be busy? We want to put up some something, you have to advertise it, promote it, and then you have to keep it running. So, medyo maraming effort yung mga other property ideas. <laughs> Yon, Marvin. Got it. Tsaka napansin ko yung mga glamping sites. You have to be near a lake or near the mountain also for you to be able to do it. And ako, parang, I, I think what, ako, as a, as a person na parang, tin, hindi, I haven't tried it yet, pero if I would try it, parang inisip ko, parang security dyan, parang it's an open area also. There's a lot of things that could happen. Wild animals or hindi ko alam, wala, never ko pa na, never ko pa na try, pero parang, I, I think that's one of the things that they have to consider uh, also, also when they start entering that. Uh, before we go exactly. to the next question, no? bigay po gay muna tayo. Uh, Randall Johnson is here. Sabi niya, idols. Uh, meron siyang question. I don't know kung gusto mo seryosohin. Paano, ka, paano maging kasing yaman mo, uh, Carl D? And then sabi niya, uh, you're an icon idol. Uh, and then, ayun, may, um, for the promo that you mentioned also, I'll flash it once again. Uh, it's over here. Yeah, uh, it, It's just basically buy one, take one for this entire live stream. And then you get to hear Carl D uh, share with the, with 15 other speakers also on different topics. So just have to scan this QR code and then it will be for the next few hours. Uh, it, it's it's by one take when you can bring um, friends that you have as well. So only for this stream. Uh, let's go back to Carl. So Carl, Carl, just for people to know, you mentioned four piece. No? Uh, for those that have joined us just now, uh, what, what do you mean you're going to talk about that in Icon also? So hello, Tito Randall. Uh, thank you for inviting us to Icon. We'll see you there next Saturday. Next next Saturday. Uh, so during Icon, I will be sharing four P's on how to rent out your vacant property. Kung condo yan, how to rent it out. I'm gonna teach you in four simple steps, which I will not disclose today. So sa <laughs> Icon na yan. Okay. Uh, let's let's continue. Uh, si Daniel M. Um, Marvin, may si singit na ako. Oh, go go go. go um, Maganda yung tinanong ni Tito Randall, ni Tito Artie about how to be mayaman, di ba? Alam mo, okay. I want to share with you guys um, one word starts with letter C. That will make you mayaman. You know what that word is? Contentment. So, ever since na-learn ko yung word na contentment, I would say, dun lang ako yumaman. <laughs> di ba, Marv? Makes sense, no? So I think uh, it plays a big role. Something for you to guys to think about na a lot of things in life you don't need. You don't need a bigger house. You don't need an electric vehicle. Di ba, Marv? <laughs> uh, wait, wait. Uh, business mo ba yun? Yung, yung, gas, yung ano, charging station ng electric car? Is that your new business? Is that yours? I see no, you no, no, no. I, I, just, I just have a electric vehicle and I nakikicharge na ako. Bago na grabe. Lifestyle check. What? <laughs> but you don't need that to be happy. You don't need that, guys. You don't need that. Just be content. Alam mo, 90% of things in the world, we don't really need. So, yun lang a secret to become rich. Contentment. Amen. Do, do, pero does it ever happen to you, Carl, na pagkabili mo nito, parang dapat binili ko yung mas... Kunyari, I'll, I'll give you an example. Bumili ka ng kotse, tapos at the back of your head, sana binili ko na lang yung mas... Uh, mas complete yung yung parang highest end of this particular model. Do you ever think about that or parang uh hindi okay okay na ako dito or kunyari I simply na lang iPhone uh, instead of i yung tatlong camera na iPhone or yung dalawa lang nabili mo yung dalawa tapos dapat pala yung tatlo yung binili ko or dapat nag-upgrade ako ng memory. Do you always think do you think about that or not really? Yeah, definitely. Uh, sa mga 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 ano kachinito ka out there na I think um when you buy something, you 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 will kind of like uh, play it in your head. What if I buy the the cheapest one? What if I buy the middle? What if I buy, buy the expensive one? Most of the time, most of the time, this is not financially uh, smart. No, most of the time, if you buy the top of the line and you can afford it, no regrets yon, di ba? Kasi you know, top of the line na nga eh, and you can afford it. Eh. So, minsan kailangan pag-isipan din yung should I go for the top of the line? Kasi kaya naman. Et, kung kaya naman, no regrets yun. So, ikaw, Marv, what, what, are you, what is your take pero, on that? Pero, pero may question ako dun eh. So, I'll give you another example. 
parang okay, binili mo yung top of the line na Fortuner, pero at the back of your head, ay, sayang, sana nagdagdag na lang ako, nagprado na lang ako, something, or, or something na higher a bit sa for, Fortuner. There will always be, kaya maganda sinabi mo na contentment because regardless kung anong binili mo, there will always be something that will be higher than what you bought there. Di ba? Na parang if you're not content, parang you will end up your whole life parang trying to uh, just chase after one item to another, then to another, then to another, then to another, then na-realize mo, uh, naubos lang yung pera mo trying to just buy stuff. I totally agree. Guys, I wanna share lang ah. Marvin is my mentor in patay living tayo. simply. Patay tayo. Yeah. Patay si Marvin, walang, walang hili- you don't see him um, spending on any branded stuff. Hindi yan, I mean, he's so secure, hindi niya kailangan ng mga social na gamit, which is, I really admire Marvin for that. Uh, so, 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 so kwet, kwet na rin natin. Yung cup na to, pinag, nag-analyze pa kami ni Carl noon. Kung il, <laughs> pila, pinag-isipan namin tatlong araw kung bibili namin to, paano namin tatawa, pag ta, na, paano tatawa. Then, when you think about it, medyo nakakatawa din kasi, ano eh, yung time and effort na inubos mo doon, you could have used for something else also. Pero, uh, good, in, in, interesting insight lang. Um, sige, this is a question for me. Do you want to read it, Carl? Good day sa inyo, galing kay Daniel M na may profile pic na cute doggy. Passive income sa Glow, is it okay? Then, okay. pag malaki na profit, ibenta na. So, uh, Glow is characterized as a stock kasi na parang sa PLDT also, historically, magand- quarterly nagbibigay sila ng dividends eh, na nagbibigay ng high high dividends as compared to other stocks that are out there. So, kung habol mo bilhin yung Globe, tapos makuha mo yung dividends from it, then it's passive. But also, kung habol mo dividends, pero sobrang laki ng inakyat niya, tulad ng 2021, Globe, parang was at 1,800, it went to 3,500 in a matter of months. Uh, and then you feel that from 1,8 to 3,5, halos doble, I won't get that much return on dividends in two years. Then it's not wrong also to sell kasi kung kunyari you're getting 8% sa globe na dividends, how many years would it take bago mag-double yung price? And then, ganun din, pag nabenta mo, you can transfer it to another dividend stock. It's There's nothing wrong with uh, taking profits. And yun yung napag-usapan namin ni Salve, Carl, last, uh, mm. sabi ko sa kanya, I think, a recorded video. Sa mga nanonood sa YouTube, just go to my uh, video with Salve. I think it's the second video we talked about MPI. Uh, yung, yung, Pananaw ko dati sa long-term investing is you buy a stock, kahit, kahit umakyat or bumabayan, as long as the company is still good, you can hold on to it. Pero what I've realized the past years is uh, if you want to, if the movement upward is very aggressive already, na parang nag-pump na siya ng sobra, and even if the company is good, and then maganda pa yung trajectory niya, it, there's nothing wrong uh, taking money off the table. I, 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 I think okay lang yun. And lahat naman lahat ng crypto investors sinasabi to uh, no one has ever lost money by taking profits true in a way pero if it goes up also you lose that opportunity pero kung okay ka naman na doon you can also lock in yun yung disadvantage din ng stock market eh, that it could be high one day then after a few weeks or months later mababa na siya sa real estate pag yun na yung presyo niya it barely goes lower than that so yun uh Sabin Shes Corner, hi Sir Marvin. Other payment option for the workshop. Um, so it's it's PayPal. Pero if you go through this QR, I'll show the QR code again. If you go to that QR code, um, kai PayPal siya. Uh, you can use your debit card or credit card, Visa, Mastercard. Um, pwede siya doon. So it doesn't mean that it's PayPal. Um, you won't be able to. You have to have to pay a PayPal account. So similar to kano ginagamit yun na B, na debit cards for BPI, Visa, Mastercard. Um, those things should should work as well. Uh, this one from Abeb. Boss Marvin, I want to ask if it's good to invest in Bitcoin again using Abra Wallet with boosting just like time deposit when you put it uh, on on it. Will it will it earn every day through Bitcoin? So I don't have Abra. They're one of the fir- earlier na first wallets also that I've heard. Pero I, I've never had the chance to use it. Um, sim- similar din to, to other platforms na you, you lodge it somewhere and then you get uh, daily rewards. Uh, I, I don't do as much of that anymore um, because of what I've seen na madaming platforms na nag-collapse na iniwan mo yung 
uh, yung pera mo sa yung crypto mo sa kanila i want to have the flexibility of having it pero if you believe that it's something that you are okay na iiwan eh, kasi you have people need to realize this na pag nag-iwan ka ng bitcoin you launch it somewhere uh, you're entrusting your coins to them so any platform yan kahit nag ka you're entrusting it to them if they collapse it's not uh damay damay ka so i, I think that's something that uh people need to realize um Reynaldo Gweb. Carl, it's 10.33 na. Maybe we'll end in like uh, 12 minutes para ano, uh, I value your time also and I know you need to rest also. Madami pang questions eh, pero I think abutin tayo ng, <laughs> abutin tayo ng madaling araw. But uh, for, that's that's an incentive for people who come early. Uh, they get, we, we, we read the questions um, in chronological uh, order. Um, Reynaldo Gweb for Carl D. What's an acceptable ROI when you buy a commercial building? Right, we'll go fast. Fast talk. Reynaldo, oh, and to, every, to everybody, no, just for extreme and for learning purposes, kunwari bumalik ka ng commercial building. Kunwari lang. And there is no there is no return every month. Kunwari lang, ha? there's no return. Pero after 10 years naman, you know that you can sell this for a 10x, 10 times its worth. So okay lang. This is applicable sa mga taong may Forbes Park na bahay na sobrang billions na when they rent it out, the ROI is super little lang. But they're okay. Kasi they're after the capital appreciation. Eh. That's the first way to look at it. Second way to look at it is money in ROI. Uh, I don't do ROI. I just do rate of return on a month-to-month, -month, uh, on a yearly basis. Rate of return. Kunwari, your money in the bank is making ngayon 5%. Diba? So now you ask yourself, is your commercial property at 5% okay with you? Or is your commercial property at 2%, kung nga lang, okay with you? Sa banko, 5. Sa commercial property mo, 2% lang. Are you okay with it? Maybe I will say, no, I don't want it. It's too expensive, kaya ang baba ng return. Or maybe I can say, yes. Kasi I will just win in the long-term capital appreciation. So parang ganun. So yeah, the, the, the challenge talaga with commercial property is the cost sometimes is so high na hirap na mag, makakuha ng magandang return. So maybe commercial property na masyadong mahal may not be a good buy unless na you see a bigger potential in the future. Next question, Marv. Got it. So, Carl, mga answers na lang, mabilisan tayo. Uh, yeah. Nash, uh, opinion about development sa Pampanga? I think Pampanga is a growing area because it's anchored on Clark. So nakita mo how I answered, there has to be an anchor. The anchor in Pampaga is Clark, so yes. Next, Marv, your turn. Okay, this one naman, ano, uh, just answer lang, no need to explain. Uh, which do you prefer, uh, rental properties or REITs? I'll answer straight, I'll, I'll pick REITs. Uh, Carl, what's your, what's your answer? Rental for me, so I have control. Got it. Okay, next one, uh, si Dan Yugot. Good day, mga lod, the boss, Marvin and Idol, Carl D. Um, thank you for sharing your wisdom. Ano po unahin ko buying a second house for rental 2.8 million or building na low-cost rental at 230 square meters? So very specific to his situation. Okay. Uh, buying a second house. Uh, buying a second house for you, for rental, is okay. Uh, just make sure na yung bibili mo at 2.8 may rental demand check the profile, check their financial capacity para alam mo kung sino mag rent sa iyo. Building a low-cost rental at 230 square meter, um, both are okay lang as long as the market is there. So you see where we're, where you should be focused. May renter, dapat may market. Yes, next. Got it. Okay, Car uh, for both of us, to, uh, which passive income works for you and then what are the challenges? And then, uh, oh yun, Carlos, si John Patrick Frias, he, uh, he'll see you in ICON. So I'll answer muna while Carl Carl's trying to think of his answer. Um I I I, I really like I really like dividends eh. Uh so if there's one if ko papapiliin ako dun sa kaninang minagtanong MP2 stock dividends uh rentals I'll, I'll I'll pick stock dividends uh because yun din trying out things for the first time you don't need a you can you can practice with 5000 pesos to be able to uh to be able to do it also. So yun um ikaw Carl mabilisan Mindset, when you open a business, ang laging tanong natin is, 
naging successful na ba yung mga ibang franchise mo? Naging successful na ba yung mga ibang stores? Can you show me proof na successful siya? So business, you look at the present. Property, you have to look a little bit into the future. Meaning, uy, bibiling ko yung property na yan. Kasi parating na yung factory ng Apple eh. I want to serve that market. I'm, I'm going to position now for two years later. So property is all about the future. So yun. Got it. Uh, from Kit Gordon in Facebook, ideal monthly rate? Very good question. I have a short answer for that. How much is my ideal monthly rental rate? It's how much the market is willing to pay for your property. That's it. It's not about what you want. It's about what the market is willing to pay. And it makes sense because kahit anong gusto mong kita, if no one's renting it from you, mababakante ka lang. Um, exactly. Cornelius V, how will owners of a 50-year-old condo na, demo- id- na ididemolish divvy up the property or the pros divide up the properties or proceeds yung pinagbentahan ng lupa lang ba ang pwedeng paghatian or meron pang iba oh, wala i think whatever proceeds come so whatever value that you guys get yun lang yung paghahatian niyo very simple Got yeah uh, from mark from youtube ano okay po ba magdiversify kagad given na maliit lang ang portfolio i'll answer first and carl if you while thinking uh, sa akin na if you diversify when it's bigger already kasi Sayang eh, you won't be able to maximize uh, yung growth if if it's spread across. Para, para sa akin yung rule of thumb mo if you want to diversify is kung yung unang asset class mo, medyo kinakabahan ka na and then you're not comfortable with it already, um, that's when you start to diversify. Or kung yung asset class mo is something that's risky uh, and then puro nandun lang lahat, maybe it's a good idea already to start putting it into something na counterbalance yan na medyo safe. Or balik na din, kung lahat ng assets mo parang very safe, maybe it would be a good time also to think about to put it into something that's riskier. How about you, Pearl? You diver- When you're young, everything that you do is all about for learning. So you diversify to a different product because you wanna taste, you wanna experience anong meron dyan. And then you learn until you find your niche, dun ka magbobomba, sabi nga nila. Next. That's it. Um, hello to Carl and my neighbor Marvin. Carlo Rosa, ano to? This is a, is a talent manager sa mga artista. Okay. Hey, Carlo, um, happy birthday. I, I saw your post being ano, 50 ba or something? Okay. okay. Talaga? Uh, small world, a super small world. Um, I missed this video. Yes, um, this will be uploaded. You can review this. If For those that are watching now, I know there's 202 in Facebook and YouTube. So uh, this will be uploaded in Facebook and YouTube. You can watch this or feeling ko si Carl magkakaroon to ng ano ng TikTok version nito. <laughs> tayo ng TikTok shorts. version. Uh, shorts, shorts, shorts. Uh Rainiel, good evening. Uh, okay, okay nabasa ko na to. Okay, second question ni ano uh, Mark Abestia. Um okpo ba passive income na REITs or risky day trading? Uh, we answered this already. Uh but Carl, would you consider day trading? Kunyari sobrang pera mo naman, would you would you do that? Okay, day trading, if you know how it works, is definitely a good strategy. Again, if you know how it works and you are able to make it work, definitely. If you know how to make it work. <laughs> Got it. Um, from Cornelius V, ano pong mas gusto nyo? Numerous low-earning properties or a few high-earning high ones? Is it better to buy one rental property in cash or five rental properties paid in solvents? Ah, parang, I, won't, I won't spoil Carol's answer because I feeling ko alam po sagot niya dito. Eh. <laughs> Uh, yeah, definitely. Five rental properties that pinag-isipan, that may market segment, paid in installment. Got it. Uh, from Elsmed Mags. Hello po, Sir Carl and Sir Marvin. If you were to start all over again from zero and have five million pesos to spend, what would be your steps and to achieve good solid passive income stream? Go, Marvin. Mauna ka na. <laughs> uh, that's a good question, no? If I'll start all over again, uh, kunyari alam ko na yung alam ko ngayon, um, I'll still buy dividend, I think I'll still buy dividend stocks kung passive income din. Uh, I'll probably distribute it 1 million each for five different stocks so that I'm not, I'm, 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 I'm exposed to dividend yielding stocks pero I'm not, I'm, I'm not heavily hit sa, but if one goes up or down. Pero yun, and I'll be sensitive dun sa yield na pwede ko makuha dun. How about you, Carl? If, if I was starting all over again and I have only 5 million to start, first, I will focus on my active income and get fresh funds as fast as I can 
fresh funds. No? And with that 5 million, I will share with you what we did when we were young. We put it in very safe, capital protected, guaranteed return products. And that's it for me. Got it. Galing. I don't want to um, risk it in, in whatever. Yeah. Car Carlo Orosa, update on Pogo rentals. I think the Pogo is very small na lang. I think. I think parang hindi ko na siya masyadong nakikita eh. They are still there, but uh, not as aggressive as before. But I've noticed more Chinese in BGC now. Ah. I've seen more now. Yeah, than, uh, oh, I, uh, yeah parang, oh, I, I've seen more. Now, well, no 2019, dami nila. Tapos biglang nawala eh. 2020, 2021, 2022. But there's more, there's more now. Um, Ed, Edgar Chulvo. Uh, what do you think is better, creating your own product or 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 improving an existing product in the market? Uh, okay, I'll go first. Huh? Um, go, go. Sabi nga nila, why reinvent the wheel if you can just improve it? No? So ako, I'll go, I guess depending on what, what arrives to, sayo, but uh, I think it's easier to improve an existing product. You just ride on it and you can easily have a marketing pitch na this is better. Got it. Uh, Cornelius V, uh, which is the best rental to choose, sir? Near place of work like Makati BGC or schools in Newbelt and Taft or tourist spots like Tagaita and Baguio? I'll, sa, sa, wala ako sagot ni Carl. Depends on who your market is. Who who will you sell exactly. it to or who will you rent it to? Oh, di ba? But do you have... Di ba, have di ba nakasawa yung sagot ko, di ba guys? But what I'm teaching you, na it's really all about the market. Di ba? Kunyari, mam... Very clear, market, Makati and BG, there's a market for there. And in fact, in fact mala, malawak yung market yan. In Makati, you will have as low as the working class market, the tindera ng SM, to the BPO worker, all the way to the expats. You built area, you have the university students, which is also a good market. Asabi nga nila, if you're renting out to the students, your target market is actually the parents. <laughs> Di ba? Sila nagbabay, they want safe, they want May, may isang dormitory nga sa may Ateneo na napakagaling niya. Um, they targeted the parents. They made it safe. They made it all girls. They made it may QR, I mean, may RFID na matatrack mo kailang umuwi yung anak mo at kailang lumalabas. There's no visitor allowed. So, it's also good. Tourist spots like Tagaytay in Baguio, maybe from, for, from a Tagaytay in Baguio point of view, a commercial property will be more consistent. See, it will be more consistent. Kasi parang wala ako nakikita ng renter na mag-rent ng matagalan sa Tagaytay or Baguio. Or medyo small yung market. Yun. Mar um, last three questions na siguro that we can put this to a yes. close. Um, Francis Florida, what's your strategy in dividend investing? How do you deal pag lumaki na yung paper loss mo? Um, you have to realize this. Uh, pag dividend investing yung habol mo, that means you're holding on to the stock. Eh. So may mga times talaga dyan na down yung market. Uh, may mga times din talaga na up yung market doon. Pero you have to realize that will be part of it. There will be times that hawak mo yung dividend stock that the red yung red yung red yung position mo doon kasi cycle she. Unless you want to actively go through yung fluctuations na yun, uh, okay lang din. Pero if you're purely you're you're gonna be a purist na dividend investing and hold it for the dividends, there will be days talaga na red siya. Now, uh, kung lumalaki yung yung paper loss kasi nag dip siya lalo. Kung para sa akin na kung yung dividend yield niya uh, does not change or meaning the dividends that they're giving is does not change and then the stock price would go down that means your dividend yield will go higher then okay lang sa akin to add some more th to that position because it increases my yield eh. and it gives me the ability na if it goes up later on I have a piece of the capital appreciation but if it doesn't I get a higher rate of return from the dividends that I would get uh, okay last two questions um oh. Daniel M just a new just got a newborn child last month. I'm thinking of putting funds regularly in MP2 for 20 years for him. Oklam po ba to or 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 should I use na ipon ko 15 years or property rental? Ayan, Carl. Uh, 20, uh, year, 20 year time horizon uh, MP2 versus um ipunin na lang niya for 15 years and then just get a property rental. Uh I think if you put it in MP2 it it it's kahit wala kang amount kahit, kahit malit yung amount pwede diba you start small then you accumulate it you compound it until it becomes big should you naipon after 15 years so parang so parang, 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 parang
parang parang what he's saying is uh you save up money for 15 years then buy a property for rental kasi hindi niya di mo di niya mabibili ka agad yun so pwede mo yung hybrid eh, 15 years mp2 pag lumaki niya yung pera after 15 years saka mo bilhin yung rental property pero yung, yeah. yung, yung I'll flip it also Carl wouldn't it be better na sa year 4 or year 5 they have enough already for equity bilhin na nila tapos mag magloan na lang sila kaysa ipunin nila yun and wait for 15 years definitely uh, leveraging is a powerful technique as long as you know how to use it no um, and again, you have to know what property you're going to buy at sigurado ka na may rental market. Just like a business, if you're going to open a Japanese restaurant and your, your price point is 500 per head, you have to make sure in your neighborhood there's somebody who wants to eat Japanese restaurant with a food budget of 500 per head. <laughs> Last question, Nisi, given the fact na pwede na mag-work from home remote nowadays, any thoughts on expat renters ng condo in the next five years or so? Makati area things are guiding light and Kuya Carlo. Kuya Carlo ka naman ngayon. Tito, tita, tito, tita, nisi. Um, before this pala, Carlo Orosa, your question about Pogo. Here's how you can process it. No, You go drive around, go to MOA area, check out the Double Dragon office, um, see if you see a thick uh, Pogo crowd. Then you will have an idea kung bumabalik na ba sila. Nisi, definitely the work from home is a game changer. Things will change because of the changing habits of people working from home remotely. You can now Zoom. You can now go to the office only two times a week. Definitely, if it will have an impact on the expats moving forward. Got it. So, Carl, um, invite them to Icon, and then what can they expect uh, for your event? See, Ruby, it's her third Icon to attend. So. Uh, what can they expect from you? Will, will you be there the whole day? Can they take pictures with you? And then what you've been to so many icons already, also. What excites you about icon as well? Ruby, I think the exciting part of icon is this ilambato mar 15 na bato. Kasama si Carl, guys. Uh, Carl is also part of this. Yeah, this is, will be 16 speakers. Yeah. So for the event. It, it's a no-brainer. 16 speakers, all you have to do is sit down and just listen, take down notes, get get all their ideas and experiences. It's a no-brainer. Got it. Um what can they what can they get what they, can they expect from you and will will you take pictures with them also? You yeah. <laughs> have For me you will learn not so much but <laughs> you can take pictures there. Uh, but so you, I will share with you the four piece of how to rent out your vacant condo. Four piece. Got it. So uh, just to end, this is the QR code. I'll flash it again right now. Uh, this is for buy one, take one um, for a couple of hours after the stream. So uh, with that, thank you so much, Carla. Ganito na lang, guys. Um, if you want Carl to come back, I think I have, I'm, I'm trying to do a, a lot of live streams leading up to Icon. Eh. So if you want Carl to come back, I think I have an open slot pa this week. And if Carl wants to come back also, put put down below, I want... Uh, atang, chinito, what do you call yourself? Chinito... Chinito. Chinito. If you want to meet, if mga kachinito ni Carl, if you want to have him again, uh, put kachinito in the comment section below, uh, wh whether if you're in YouTube or in Facebook. And then if if schedules permit also for Carl, uh, we'll have him also. And then yun lang. Thank you, Carl, for uh, being a good sport in all of this. Um, we'll end it. We'll, uh, but i just like to thank everyone who stayed for almost two hours watching. And we'll just end it with uh, clips from Icon. But Carl, thank you so much. Uh, and to everyone, God bless you all. Good night, everybody. There's no perfect investments. And that's the reason why there's Icon. People are going to talk to you about stocks. People talk to you about funds. People talk about the BUL. People talk to you about properties. People talk to you about business. We even have blockchain later on. Why? We, we need you to understand that there's no one perfect formula. That's why you have to diversify your investment. Very, very important as you learn all of these things is this. Practice due diligence in anything. In investing, in the bank, in insurance, in property. Practice due diligence. There is a law, natural law called the law of diminishing returns. So even if I add more, it will diminish because the capacity has to expand before you can expand. Ano yung importante sa'yo? 
walang tama o mali dito. Unfortunately, dahil nga sa ingay sa labas, hindi mo alam eh kung ano gusto mo talaga at importante sa'yo. Pag wala ka nito, sasama ka sa ibang tao, kung ano importante sa kanila, join ka din. So it is very important to find out ano ang gusto mo because eventually, lahat yan ang gagaling sa beliefs. The economy was created to serve society in order to improve our human condition. So as part of the economy, as investors, you're supposed to be contributing to a better society for everyone. Leverage is a very uh, aggressive strategy. Proceed with caution. Never, never borrow money that you cannot pay. Yes. And oh, I think this is just to open your minds about, about leverage. And this is really how the wealthy businessman thinks. It is only by tracking your finances you'll be able to know how to maneuver, how to control, and you'll see ano ba yung lifestyle mo that you want to maintain from today until you age. What we are good at in the market is this. We are good at helping incubate the growth of vendors because we know everybody in the ecosystem. We know people who finance, we know people who provide HR, we know people who provide marketing, we know people who provide sanitation and hygiene. So we are the best people to grow those businesses. So, why is understanding money critical for women, OFWs, and the next generation? Why? Because what is a nation but a collection of its people? It's about our personalities. And it has a deep and it has a big impact in everything that we do, including how we handle money, including how we make decisions, and how we keep money, make money, save, and actually invest. So stocks, recurring assets, recurring income assets, and um, fast capital appreciation assets. Those are the three things that we have to hold during our lifetime and work for. Uh, the second thing is, I'm very excited about the future. I am not bullish because there are many other things we have to sort out before I become bullish, but the future looks very bright. Financial expert years, just like Marvin, just like Rex, Carl, Jason, the rest of the team, they could update you. But I strongly advise that you also take your personal journey. Read their books, try to read, try to expand your knowledge. I want whatever is said here will cause you to execute and do something. Because it's time for Filipinos, it's time for you guys to prosper. Why? Because we're the 1%. Eh. Your friends are looking at you. Eh. The more Filipinos, good Filipinos, have more than enough, you get to be a blessing to the people around you. Eh. When you have more than enough, you're now looking for people who you can bless and who you can so on. For me, the stock market is one of the best ways for you to do it. I suggest you invest now because this is one of the best times to invest. Overcoming obstacles create momentum. Today is momentum. You know why? You paid money for this seminar. It starts something. It is starting something because you're creating something that gets the ball rolling. Bye guys. God bless and have a great night ahead.